I now invite uh, Dr. Minija Anand, Diagnostic Dilemma. I would like to thank Dr. Somshila and the UAD Society for giving me an opportunity. So I, I thought like you should uh, mention the title. Yes. Like, just like, <laughs> so mine is a 41 year old male. Came with complaints <laughs> of redness in both the eyes since 20 days and diminution of vision in the left eye since 5 days. No significant history in the past. On examination, right eye was normal except for anterior chamber was shallow with Van Herrick's 2 and the left eye had 618 N18 vision. IOP was normal. Again, the AC was shallow. And this is more striking here, the anterior chamber being shallow. That is the only significant finding in the anterior chamber. So the glaucoma patient went to the glaucoma department, was diagnosed as primary angle closure glaucoma. ACPI was done in both the eyes. Patient came for follow-up for fundus evaluation. On fundus evaluation, the right eye showed disc hyperemia. You can see the ILM falls with the macula. With a, on a detailed evaluation, there was an inferior uh, choroidal detachment. The left eye had mild disc hyperemia. You can see the subretinal yellowish lesion, nasal to the disc, and superotemporal uh, area. There is a choroidal detachment, 360 degree, exudative retinal detachment. And OCT showed, again, there is undulation of the RP, subretinal fluid, intraretinal fluid, and hyperreflective dots. The B scan showed RCS thickening in both the eyes, the left eye more than the right eye, and there was a choroidal detachment in the left eye. So again, the confusion of diagnosis, I'm sure now the VKH is now, you know, a lot of it's masquerading. So we had a diagnosis, whether it is a type three uveal issue, effusion syndrome, atypical VKH, CSCR or a posterior scleritis. So as usual, routine workup was done and FFA ICG was ordered. The FFA, the right eye showed peripheral vascular leak. Whereas the left eye, you can see the nasal, there are pinpoint leaks, but it's like an ink blot kind of leaks. There's no vessel leakage. The ICG right eye was okay. The left eye showed persisting hyposinusins in the nasal and the lesion, which I showed the subretinal lesion that was still hyposinus even in the late phase of the angio. The UBM, the ultrasound biomicroscopy showed celio, the suprachoroidal fluid and ciliary body rotation in 360 degree, but it was seen in both the eyes. So we worked up the case and everything was negative. All the infective etiology was negative and serum cortisol also was done thinking, are we dealing with an CSE? The treatment patient was started on Vyslon, 1 milligrams per kg body weight. And one week fall off, you can see the subretinal fibrin was increasing. So again, we had a doubt, are we dealing with CSC here or is inflammatory or a non-inflammatory pathology? But still, I had a consultation with Dr. Mahesh also, and then we continued the steroid. He felt it is inflammatory and not CSC. And you can see the choroidal detachment is still, the exudative RD is still persisting. Those subretinal fibrin, you can see they're still there. And you can see this OCT, it is, the, the characteristic was increased choroidal thickness in this patient. There was significant th increase in the choroidal thickness, the hyperreflective dots. Those were a little confusing whether are we dealing with an inflammatory or a non-inflammatory etiology because we know that even a type 3 UES, you can have this fluid, subretinal fluid. The choroid was thickened even in the other eye. So this was the, on the presentation, you can see the choroidal thickness is decreasing with steroids. And so we had a doubt, are we dealing again with the CSE? So we repeated an FFA. The right eye was same peri peripheral leakage. The left eye, those whatever the leak was first, that is gone away. So the question here is now, is it type three? I want the panelists to let me know if it's type three UES, which I'm dealing with, or it is atypical VKH, because now we have that bilateral pachycoroid with UVL effusion syndrome. So the treatment differs if it is an inflammatory and a non-inflammatory etiology, and still the non-exudative, I mean, exudative RD is still not resolved. So do we need to do anything like a subretinal drainage or analysis? I want the opinion from the expert. Padma, you want to answer? Basically, there, definitely there is a combination of inflammatory and also the CSE component is there. So we have to address both. This is like a CISA effect. When you increase anti-inflammatory, the exudative and CD will increase. So I think we need to address both. I just want, I think Dr. Basu is a VR surgeon. Do you think the type 3 UVL efficient syndrome which we're dealing with a sclerotomy? Because the VK, the picture is somewhat like a VKH and a UVL efficient because now I think there was a published in BMC ophthalmology, bilateral pachycoroid with a type 3 UVS which had a similar kind of leak. Because the leakage is not so characteristic of 
VKH nor CSC because if it was a CSC that subretinal fibrin wouldn't have got resolved with the steroid so that's where the confusion is I <laughs> so um, the question is those pinpoint leaks which you were seeing I mean would it make a difference if you could laser I and, just wanted uh, to, I was uh, planning for a... Because yeah. anyway, this patient is on steroid Correct. and there is a variation in the choroidal thickness <laughs> okay. uh, in terms of... But, uh, but uh, when I repeated the FA, that leaks went away. So that's why I had a discuss with Dr. Mahesh mm. and uh, I told I laser, then sir said, no, it's not, it's not uh, CSC. CSC. It's more in favor of an inflammatory tear. Because at OCT, the hyperreflective dots, you don't see much in UUAS, sir. But it, it's, it's a spectrum where, you know, again, there is a confusion about... See, the only thing unusual about the VKH is the disc appears okay all along in spite yeah. of this extensive amount of... Maybe I think you should also look for if these patients are on any other drugs or anything which... No, he's uh, not on. Then I saw an article on tuberculous posterior scleroeuveitis, which had a similar kind of presentation where, you know, so that's the reason I did a workup for the TB. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done the workup for TB. As you said, you, should do a, you shouldn't do an unnecessary investigation on the patient. So that's and I found an article, so I did. But recently, I just found a similar kind with UVA, UES, pachycoroid with UES. So I think the probably the effect will be to just hold on to the steroid because and okay. watch him closer. No, I've just had yeah. an IMT also, even a modulator, thinking that if it is inflammatory, maybe it'll. Yeah, that complement stop the steroids, continue with immunosuppression, Correct. see the response. If it is not responding, surgery is a last resort, if I consider. Okay. But not at this stage. Okay.